Hello and Assalamu alaikum. So we are going to continue with the system characterization by using linear constant difference equation. So last uh, last class you uh, already uh, used the inverse Fourier transform to get the response time in time domain. Now we are going to look at an, uh, another example which is uh, example using uh, circuit C, uh, circ, uh, RL RL C circuit. So let's look at this example nine. So you have this for the series RL circuit shown below. First one is that obtain the frequency response of H omega, which is the what is the uh, res, the frequency response of the system H omega equal to H R over B. So you have uh, here is that you have B R over B of the circuit. So that one is the first question. Second question is that solve the voltage V R and I R use if if V T is given this V T is given then exponential minus 3 T D V. So for this example is that we are going to use the uh, either the voltage divider or current divider. So example uh, is, this, is this one or if you can recall back what you have learned in circuit theory and even in control 1. So before we proceed with this example, let's do a recap on the revision of a circuit theory subject and control 1. So this is a combination of those subjects. So we are going to use the fundamental what you have learned, you, what you have learned in circuit theory and control 1. Okay. So uh, let's look at uh, uh, this table. So this table shows the voltage current, voltage charge and impedance relationship for capacitor, capacitor, capacitor resistor and inductance. Okay, so you have first one is on capacitor, resistor, inductance. So what we are going to look at uh, in, I'm going to directly uh, focus on uh, using the impen, in, impedance, eh, impedance Z. So, for example, if you have a capacitance, uh, directly you have, we are going to use the impedance in terms of impedance, 1 over CS, a resistance R and inductance R. Of course, if you have, um, uh, if you refer to this table, you can actually see that we have the voltage current, Vt is given by 1 over, this, over C, yeah. integrated I over dt or you have for the reason vt equal to rir and you have vl is ldi over dt so you can look at uh, the different equation in terms of voltage current voltage uh, current voltage voltage charge impedance and emittance so um, to do to, to answer question example 9 is that we are going to model the circuit so there are two different ways is that using the kitchen Teacher of voltage law, so which is you are going to actually the algebraic sum of voltage around any closed loop in an uh, electric circuit is equal to zero. So you already know that the, the summation of all the voltage is equal to zero for a closed loop. And uh, Kirchhoff current law is that the algebraic sum of current into any junction in an electric circuit is equal to zero. So let's look at example directly. For example, is we are going to look at the series resistance. So we have uh, Vs uh, voltage uh, input. We have I here. We have uh, resistor one and then resistor two. Of course, uh, across this resistor, you have V one and V two. So to answer this is that uh, we are going to look at how we are we can actually solve this problem. So first one is that by using the and remember this one is just a recap on what you have learned in circuit theory. Okay, so um, here we are going to look at the Kirchhoff for this law. Okay, so we have V S here minus V one minus V two is equal to zero. So you already know that. So you substitute the value for V V I and V V one and V two. So you have V S minus I R one minus I R two. So you have in the end, you have Vs equal to R1 plus R2i. So, for in it is this case that we are going to use the voltage divider rule. So, it means that we are going to find what is the V, uh, v voltage across R1. So, V1. So, V1 is equal to I R1 equivalent to 
R1 over the summation of the resistance R1 plus R2 times Rs, Rbs, which is times the input voltage. So we get the voltage divided root. And for V2, is the same concept with V1 just now. So V2 equivalent to V2 over V1 plus R2 times Vs. Okay. So therefore, from these two equations, right, we can actually show that V1 over V2 is actually equivalent to R1 over R2. So let's look at an example of a parallel resistance. So we have a, a circuit where by you have the resistance in parallel, R1 and R2 in parallel. So uh, first of all is that, to solve this is that, list out what are the equations that you have. So you have I1 equal to Vs over R1. Okay. Since this one be Vs, then therefore this one is actually same as the voltage across Vr. Okay, so you have I1 equal to Vs minus Vr and I2 equal to Vs over V2. Okay, so and uh, according to the uh, current teach of law, okay, just now is that uh, I current going into is equal to current going out, or you can say that any the, the summation of current is equal to zero. Okay. So, you have I equal to I1 plus I2. Therefore, we can substitute this equation here. So, you have this last equation. And we can actually reorganize the equation become like this. So, you can see that for a single resistor, uh, a resistor in parallel, you can actually uh, get the equivalent circuit for this R. Okay which is I1 over R equivalent to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Okay. So, for the current divider rule is that we can find what is I1 equivalent to R2. Okay. I1 equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times 1. And for I2 is that R1 over R1 over R2 times I. Okay, next we are going to look at an uh, uh, example of a summing circuit. Okay, so figure, this figure shows the circuit for summing voltage V1 and V2 to produce V3. So you have, you have V2 here. Okay. And then you have V3 here. Okay. So, derive the expression for V3. This is V3. Okay. Of a function of V1 and V2. For the case of where R1 equal to R2 equal to 10 ohm and R3 equal to 20 ohm. So, first of all is that, okay, find the voltage current relationship for each resistance. So, we have I1. I1 is here. So, I1 is actually V, V1 minus V3 divided by R1. Okay, and I2 is this one, V2, V2 minus V3 over R2. And I3 is... V3 minus R3. Okay, so the from the current feature of law is that conservation of charges I3 is actually equivalent to I1 plus I2. So you have I2 and I I2 and I1 going into this point, so it's equivalent to I3. So, just substitute the value I1, I2, I3 into this equation. Then, you rewrite it into this equation. And, in the end, you will get V3 equal to 0 0.4 in bracket V1 plus V2. Of course, when you after you substitute this value into this equation. Okay, 
So in the end, you derive V3 as a function of V1 and V2. So next, looks, next, let's look at the application of the voltage divider rule. Okay, so you have this equation. So consider the circuit shown in this figure. Obtain the voltage V0. So you have V0 here as the output as a function of the applied voltage Vs. So Vs you have here. By applying the voltage divider rule. Okay, so first of all, what you need to do is that you need to simplify the circuit. So you see that you have R1, R2, R3 and R4. What you need to do is that first you need to actually make what you see is that you have this uh, resistance in series. So simplify first this in series so you actually get uh, the value. So you have you're given a value of resistance. Eh? Okay, you have R R15, R2 is 10. Okay, R3 is 6 and R4 is 2. Okay, so if you have a resistance in series, is that you just add this up, these two uh, resistance together. So you may rewrite this equation as 5, 10, and then these two, you will add it up, sum it up, you will get 8. Okay, so from here is that you use the parallel resistance equation just now so where you have you can uh, calculate what is the, uh, the, the, the equivalent circuit for this R value okay so 1 over RP so this one we call is RP 1 over RP is 1 over 10 plus 1 over 8 so you will get 9 over 40 okay so rewrite that into this equation Okay, uh, sorry, rewrite this into this circuit. So you have a simplified circuit, simplified circuit. So you have 5 and 40 over 9. So now is that you can simply use the voltage divider rule. So V0 here, so remember here is, you have V0 at the end here. Okay, so V0 here is equivalent to, this is R4, R4 over R3 plus R4. Okay, times VA. So it means that this is VA. This is VA. Okay, for the first equation. So substitute value for R. Then you will get 1 over 4 VA. Okay, so uh, did you get this? So let me uh, just repeat it. So V0, so V0 is here. So using the voltage divider rule is that okay you have A here so therefore the voltage across here is what we call as VA. So voltage divider rule is that you can actually calculate what is V not here by using the voltage divider rule. So you have V not equal to R4 over R4 plus R3 times VA. So therefore you get this equation. Okay. So, in end up, you have V0 equal to 1 over 4 VA. So, that one will be the first equation. Okay. From the circuit that you simplified just now, okay, what you need to do is that you're going to actually get the uh, equation for VA across here. So, VA is using also the voltage divider rule. So, VA equal to 40 over 9 over 5 plus 40 over 9 times Vs. Okay, so you get 8 over 17 Vs. This one will be equation number 2. Okay, so therefore you are going to solve for the Va with respect to Vs value. So V not here, okay, we are going to take this equation for 1, V not equal to 1 over Va. Therefore, equivalent to what is VA value, which is from here. Okay, so substitute that. So you get 1 over 4 times 18 over 17 Vs. So in the end, you will get the final equation V not equivalent to 2 over 17 Vs. Okay, very simple. 
now we are going to do the uh, uh, example of analysis with loop current but by, instead of using the normal uh, resistance value we are going to use the impedance exact value so if you if you remember in control one you have learned in control one okay you can write out the resistance the inductance and in the capacitance in terms of impedance z so for capacitance is that you can write it out, out as 1 over cs resistance is r and inductance is ls so this one is in laplace so actually if you see here s is actually equal equivalent to j omega so what we have been learning in uh, this Fourier transform is in terms of j omega okay so let's look at this example of RLC circuit. So you have uh, the input Vs, you have the inductance, you have the resistance and capacitance, and of course, and you have here the output voltage across the capacitance as we see. Okay. So um, in control one, actually, uh, if you go through the, the the notes of control one, okay, you can actually write out the equation easily. Okay. The equation is this. Okay, summation of impedance means that summation of impedance in this loop times Is, which is the current around this loop, equivalent to sum of applied voltage. So what are the applied voltage here? So if we have applied voltage Vs, then you, you equal to the Vs. If there is no applied voltage, then it's equivalent to zero. So if we, are, we take this into account then rewrite again this equation so sum of impedance is that by looking at this table okay so it means that you have inductance write directly the value is l as 4 but for this case in Fourier transform is that we are going to write it as l j omega and resistance is all resistance and for the capacitance is that 1 over c s means that you write it as 1 over C J omega. Okay. So, if you write out this equation, you will write it as Ls plus, it's because it's impedance and you already converted it to impedance value. So, Ls plus R plus 1 over Cs times the current. So, the current Is equivalent to Vs. So summation of applied voltage here is only Vs, so equal to Vs. So this is how you write the equation easily. Okay. When you're using in impedance in the impedance format. Okay, let's look at an uh, example of a uh, circuit where we have multiple loops. Okay, multiple loops, eh? So you have uh, loop 1, loop 2, loop 3, right? So for this one, it's just an exercise. How, how do you get the uh, equation or the mesh equation for each of the network? Okay, so just write out this, um, write out the solution uh, for each of the network. So now uh, we try to do for the first match, yeah? mesh eh, or first uh, loop eh. okay for the first loop is that you have loop one two three four let's look at the first loop which is this one okay so uh, based on the previous uh, example is that you you know that uh, you can actually write out the uh, mesh equation using the impedance eh, sum of impedance so for the first loop is that sum of impedance around mesh one Okay, times I1 minus sum of impedance common to I1 and I2. So you have I1 here, I1 too. So what are the common impedance between? So sum it up times I2 minus sum of impedance common to I1 and I3. Okay, I3. So it means that what are the impedance total up? So for this case, it's only R, which is equal to 1. Okay, so minus sum of impedance common to mesh 1 and 3 times I3. Equivalent to 
sum of applied voltage around mesh 1. So for this case is that around mesh 1 or loop 1 is you have Vs. So equivalent to Vs. So that is how you get the first equation. Now let's go to the equation uh, for mesh 2. So it means that this mesh, mesh 2. Okay. So similar to what you did for equation for mesh 2, okay, start with the loop at I2. Eh? Okay. So I start here since we are starting at loop I2. So sum of impedance around mesh 2 here. Okay, so sum it up. So we have 4s, 3s, we have 1 and 2s. So sum it up times I2. Okay, remember, next is minus sum of impedance common to mesh 2 and 1. So you have 2 here, you have 1 here. So common to impedance 1 and 2 is actually this equation. Eh? So minus sum of impedance common to mesh 1 and 2. 2 okay, times I1 okay, and next is minus sum of impedance common to mesh 2 and 3 okay, which is we have 4s here times I3 equivalent to sum of applied voltage around mesh 2 so do you see any applied voltage around this uh, mesh 2 for loop number two, no voltage value. So this value is actually equivalent to zero. Okay. Similarly to what you have done in uh, for the equation for mesh one and two, so you are going to find what is the equation for mesh three. So mesh three is similar. We start with at this part there. Eh? So sum of impedance around mesh three. So you have one over s, four s, and one. So, uh, sum it up times I3 minus sum of impedance common to I3 and 1. So, this one. So, you have minus here. Total it up times I1 and minus sum of impedance common to loop 3 and 2. So, which is this one. Okay. Common to loop 2 and 3. So, times I2 equivalent to sum of applied voltage around mesh 2. So this is mesh 3. Any value or any applied voltage there? No value. So it equal to 0. Okay. So from here is that we can actually move forward to actually solve using Fourier transform. Okay. So back again to example 9. Okay. So we have gone through how to actually use the voltage divider, the current divider, and so on. So uh, now it's uh, actually easy peasy. So first one is that obtain the frequency response of H omega, where equivalent to V R over V okay, of the circuit. So let's go to the first one. Okay, using the uh, equation that you know just now. So we are going. It's given in the question is that. H omega equal to V R over V. So first is that get the equation from this match, match one and loop one. Eh? So we are going to use this okay equation. So sum of impedance, sum of impedance. So we have R here and then we have L, nothings. So actually we can actually write out the sum of impedance. For this case, is that we are going to write it in terms of ZT. Eh? So ZT, okay, sum of impedance, it's 2. So R, we have impedance 2 plus uh, inductance is LS. So it's N then it's written as S equal to J omega. So you rewrite it as this one. So J omega L, L is 1. So we have 2 plus J omega okay, times Is equivalent to Vs. So which is, if you see here, okay, okay, this is done. So now we are going to look at this C 
second equation. V R. Okay, V R is I omega times R. Okay, and we are going. To, we are actually going to write out the equation. Okay, using this equation. Okay, so I omega, which is this one, I omega, I omega is equal to V over 2 over G omega. So, uh, we rewrite it. Okay, I omega is V over dependence, ZT. Okay, this one, bring it down here. So, this is over ZT. Okay, so therefore, you get this equation. Okay, times R. Okay, so substitute what the value that you actually write out here. Okay, substitute here. That's why we get V omega over 2 plus J omega times 2. 2 is the resistant value. Eh? Okay, then you will get VR equivalent to 2 V omega over 2 J omega. So, uh, the question was, find what is H omega. So, H omega is VR omega over V omega. So, equivalent to VR just now, you calculate it. So, substitute this into this value. So, we have V 2V over 2 plus J omega. Divide by V omega. Okay, so when you divide by V omega, then this one is cancelled out. And in the end, you will get 2 over 2 over 2 plus J omega. Okay, the second question was solve the voltage VR and IR if VT is equivalent to 10 exponential minus 3T UT. Okay, so solve for VT. So, Vt, we write it in terms of Fourier transform. So, Vr omega equivalent to I, I omega times R. Equivalent to, okay, I omega just now, the one that you did in the first uh, uh, question. So, V over 2 plus J omega times 2. So, the first equation. Then, we want to find the value. Okay, substitute. Okay, when you have Vt value. So, Vt value substituted inside here. So, first, refer to the Fourier transform table okay, to get the Fourier transform for this equation Vt. So, we are going to convert from time domain to frequency domain. Okay, so, V omega. So, use the table 3 here. So, we have... Uh, 10 e minus 3 t u t so we have uh, this equation so 10 is the amplitude okay so transfer this so when you have vt equal to 10 e minus 3 t u t you can rewrite it in frequency domain as uh, equivalent to 10 over 3 plus g omega okay and from here is that substitute into this equation okay so therefore this is actually the same as this okay 10 plus 3 plus j omega times this one is this value rearrange it here so times 2 over 2 plus j omega now we are going to use the partial fraction to get the value for a and b value okay because if you see the question is that we need to solve for VR in terms of time domain and uh, time domain for VR and IR. So we are going to do the partial fraction. Okay, using partial fraction, okay, find the value A and B. So use the partial fraction, A you get minus 20, B you get 20. Therefore, just substitute the value here. Okay, into this, you will get this equation then. By referring to the table 3, use the inverse Fourier transform. So, from here, refer back to this value in terms of time and domain. Then, you can rewrite it as, okay, 20, this one is 
e minus 2t minus 20e minus 3 minus 3t ut. Okay, so you get for vr. And then to solve for ir is ir equivalent to v minus r. Okay, so just take the value for vt here. Okay, divide by r value is 2. So you get 10 times e minus 2t minus e minus 3t times 2t. Okay, so this is how you solve for the uh, the, the circuit using uh, Fourier transform. So um, as an exercise, is that you're going to, you do this and submit it uh, by next week. So exercise six, okay, similar to what you did. Uh, well, just try it out. Let's try exercise six. Okay, I give you the answer already. Find the answer, so you just uh, derive it, try it out, and submit it. Try out exercise uh, seven. This as far as seven is actually the past year final exam. So uh, question one and two, and then uh, try it out exercise eight. Also a past year final exam. Okay, so uh, do that exercise six, seven, and eight, and submit by next week. So that will be all. Thank you very much.